Morning folks and welcome back. Uh, this video is a, is a tagged video. Um, I've, been, I've been tagged by Mike from Live Simply Films uh, to show you and talk about my top five, my favorite five bits of outdoor gear. So I'm sure you know how these videos work. Um, once, I've, once I've shown you my, my top five bits of, bits of kits, um, I then nominate five other people to do the same. So those of you who know me, uh, or who've seen my videos before, uh, this will come as no surprise. Um, top of my list has to be my canoe. Uh, this is my absolute pride and joy. It's a home-built cedar strip canoe. Um, took me about three months to build it. Lots of hours, lots of blood, sweat and tears. And I absolutely love it. Uh, it's fast in the water. It's really rigid. It's light, it's only about uh, 23 kilos, so you know, less than a bag of cement is the way I, I like to think of it. Uh, so, you know, I can lug this about, I can put it up on my shoulders, I can carry it, it's, it's minimal effort. Um, and, uh, and because it's, it's light and rigid, it, it just cuts through the water really well, turns easily, it's really maneuverable, it's a beautiful boat. Love it. Um, one of my very favorite things to do is to, uh, to get away from it all on the river. Um, you know, in East Anglia, where I live, there are very few places where you can, you can get away from, from humans and human impact uh, in the environment. Um, but on our rivers, that, well, that's, that's, that's one of the places you can. Um, so I like to, you know, just load up for a day even. Get out on the river and you can really, you can get away from it all. The whole world slows down. The whole world looks very different from, from the water's perspective. Um, you know, you can sneak up in a canoe uh, on wildlife, you can see things that you wouldn't normally see because you, you glide along silently. Um, it really is the perfect way uh, to, to travel and to, um, to explore, in my mind. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, I would, I, would, I would never be without a canoe. It's my means of, of getting into the wilderness. Number one. Second on my list has to be my knife. Um, I'm a keen bushcrafter and, um, and the knife really is the bushcrafter's tool. Um, it, it's used for so many tasks uh, around camp making stuff. You know, bushcraft is all about making life more comfortable um, in a sort of wilderness environment or out in the woods. Um, and without a knife it's difficult to do that. You know, you need to make things. You need to make a shelter, possibly a bed. Um, you need to prepare wood. You need to get a fire lit so you might have to you might have to make feather sticks, you, you know, just... I couldn't possibly reel off the, the, the uses of a bushcraft knife. There's just too many. But, um, you know, it's a really important tool for me. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look. So this is the TBS bore. Um, it's uh, sold uh, by a company called the Bushcraft Store here in the UK. Um, and uh, this, this particular model is called the, the bore. This is the TBS bore. Um, and uh, it's a great knife. It's a really heavy knife. It's a very thick bladed knife. I don't know whether you can pick that up on the uh, on the screen there, but it's um, it's got a, a much thicker blade than a lot of knives out there. And that's because it's stainless steel. Um, stainless steel is a lot more brittle than uh, carbon steel. So their answer to it was to have a thicker blade. Um, it's it's perhaps a little bit too thick for some jobs. Um, you know, if you've got a if you've got a chop. Vegetables, slicing potatoes is a classic one that I always, that always makes me think of. If I've got a slice of potato, this thing just doesn't doesn't want to know. It kind of just brutally cuts its way through. It sort of wedges its way through. So you might as well get your axe out really and just chop your potato with your axe because this kind of does the same job. But for all other tasks, it's brilliant. It's a Scandinavian grind, so it's really easy to uh, to maintain and to and to keep nice and sharp. Um, drop point. It's a it's a great knife. I, you know, I do a lot of canoeing, so I wanted a I wanted a stainless blade, so I didn't have to worry about it rusting. It's much easier to, to maintain. Um, the handle is my Carter. Again, I chose my Carter. I, I, there are options when you buy these knives. You can have you can have um, various other woods, um, but I wanted to go for again something that will withstand the damp um, and and be minimum maintenance minimum fuss so my carter is what I went went for with these nice black liners and uh, yeah it's a good knife this is a this is also a great knife for chopping 
if you've got a if you've got a sharp at a point onto some hazel poles, for example, because you've got to drive them into the ground, uh, you can you can hold this further back on the handle here at the end, and you can chop with it. And um, there's enough weight in the in the blade itself to almost act act like a hatchet, and um, you know it'll make light work of, of, of jobs like that. So it's a, you know it's a really good useful tool. Comes with this nice nice sheath. Um, there are options again when you buy this from the bushcraft store. Um, you can have this one, which is a kind of like a scout carry uh, sheath, because that's how I like to carry my knife horizontally on my belt. Um, but they also do a dangler sheath, and you can get you can get it with other options. Like there's a there's a whetstone pouch, the uh, sorry a DC4 sharpening stone pouch that goes on the side, and you can get one that has a a little ferro rod holder and things like that. But I just I just went for the simple scout carry um, sheath. But yeah, good knife, and I wouldn't be without it. So that's number two. Number three on my list is uh, something to cook in. Um, I've got my zebra billy pot here. This is a 12 centimeter zebra billy pot. And it's the, uh, it's the cooking pot, pan, whatever you want to call it, that I use the most. Um, it's very versatile. Um, obviously, I don't need to worry about chucking this in the fire. I can either hang it with this bale handle um, or I can, uh, I can just sit it in the, in the fire itself, build the fire up around it, boil water. It's big enough for me. You know, I can boil quite a lot of water in here. I can't remember exactly what it holds actually, but um, you know, it's probably a liter and a half of water that I can boil in here if I need to make it safe. I can do uh, a large stew in here. I can steam food, um, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, you can even roast in these. I did a video a while back uh, um, where I roasted a, a small chicken in this, in this um, pot and that worked really well as well. When you buy them, they come with a little insert this little dish here, which is actually designed as a steamer, um, and you uh, you can put that in the top, water in the bottom, put this in the top, and um, you know if you crack a couple of eggs into there, they will steam away quite nicely while your water's boiling, and um, and and it stops them from sticking so badly, and uh, it cooks them a bit more gently, and um, it comes with a simple lid. Originally, this had a different handle, uh, one like this. See, I love this pot so much; I have two of them. Uh, this is the original handle that you get, which is a rigid bale handle. Um, but uh, I took I took it off the other pot, the other pot, because um, the problem with it is uh, it tends to just fall down like this when you put it in the fire, unless you have these special clips. Now I bought this uh, without those clips. I, I have made a sort of a sort of rudimentary kind of holder there just to hold it up, hold the hold the handle up. But the problem I was finding is it was falling down like this and getting really hot in the in the fire if I wasn't hanging it off a pot hanger and um, it was a bit of a pain. Uh, also it takes up more room as you can see the handle sticks out here so when it's in your pack you have these sort of sharp corners here and I wasn't keen on that idea either. So the, the wire one here which is just made from uh, a bicycle um, gear cable or brake, brake cable I think it was um, and some little brass, I bought some brass tubing which I um, I put the the braided steel cable through and just crimped it to, to close it off and to fasten it and that, that's worked really quite well and this will this will sort of uh, fold down like that out of the way it doesn't you know it folds flat it doesn't take up any room but uh, yeah I mean these these pots are indestructible they're uh, they're really good um, you know it's, this is deformed slightly through through use through heat and the, it, uh, the, the little um, insert doesn't really go in as well as it used to it's a bit of a tighter fit but you know, it's fine. It's fine. This'll last this will last me forever, I'm sure. And if it doesn't, I've got a spare. <laughs> so yeah, number three. Ah, the sun's finally come out. Right, fourth on my list has got to be my tarp. Uh, big fan of the tarp. It's my favourite, my favourite sort of shelter, my favourite way of camping is, is under a tarp, especially in woodland. Um, you know, if I'm up in the mountains or whatever, I'll use a tent. Um, but for, for general woodland uh, trips and whatnot, I much prefer a tarp. This is a DD three meters by three meters tarp, um, and uh, it's really versatile. It's got loads of um, uh, loops for, for lashing up in, in all sorts of different configurations. I've done a couple of videos on different, different setups using this tarp, um, but yeah, it's great. Um, you know, you, with a tarp, you, you you sort of feel a little bit more like you're in the woods. Um, you have obviously much better visibility around you. 
um, and uh, you can you can use your fire for warmth. You can set it up like a lean-to and have your fire in front of you, um, and uh, you know it's, it's great. You can you can even set this up like a tent. I've also done a video on that. Um, how to how to set this up as a as a tarp tent. So you just have a small opening at the front, and that works really well as well. I've used that on canoe trips. Um, but yeah, great. My tarp, shelter number one. And that brings me on to my fifth and final item, um, and that is my boots here. I have several pairs of boots, um, but these are old friends. I bought these in 1990, so that's 27, 28 years ago, and they're still going strong. The soles have worn a little bit on them, but um, you know these are still by far my most comfortable boots and my number one boots if I'm up in the mountains. They're a good, solid uh, pair of leather uh, Scarpa SL Attacks. Um, brilliant boots, uh, sort of three season hill walking boots. Um, they'll, take, they'll take crampons. Um, they've also got the little groove around them, um, so you can use those uh, Berghaus Yeti gaiters that seal around the, the, the boot sole. Um, and uh, you know they're great. They're just so comfortable. You can't beat a decent pair of leather boots if you look after them well. I've had I've had um, boots since fabric ones, Gore-Tex lined ones, you name it, and um, and they always seem to break down eventually or or come apart. These are just built so well. They are they are really really tough boots that will last. They'll probably last me a lifetime. I'll probably still have these, you know, into my 60s and 70s if I last that long. Um, you know, they're great. And you can have them resold, you know. I haven't done, but I could have these resold. And um, probably, to be honest, when I wear the soles out, I will. Because um, I love them. So yeah, great boots. Absolutely great boots. Right, so there's my top five bits of outdoor gear. Um, and the idea is now that I nominate five other people to, to do theirs. Um, now, you don't have to do this. Uh, I'm not going to be offended if you if, if you don't want to. That's fine. Uh, it's just a bit of fun. Um, so if you fancy it, um, you know, stick your video up with your top five things. And the people I want to nominate are um, Andy from AM Bushcraft. Um, now, if you haven't checked out Andy's channel, it's it's really good. Um, you know, he deserves to have a lot more subs than he has. Um, he, he puts in a lot of effort into his videos. They're really interesting. Um, and uh, you know, yeah, top bloke. Um, so check him out if you haven't done, but Andy, you're my first nominee. Secondly, I'd like to nominate Mike from Ginger Bushcraft. Um, so Mike, if you're up for it, let's see your top five. That'd be brilliant. Third on the list is Steve from North Knife. Um, Steve's a, a Brit who lives in Sweden, lucky bugger. Um, and uh, he's, got some, he's got some great videos up as well of, uh, you know, canoe trips and things in Sweden that just makes me, make me green with jealousy. Um, but he hasn't put up a video in a little while, so Steve, if you're up for it, um, it'll be great to see what your top five are. Next is Mark uh, from uh, Y Explorer. Um, be great to see see what your top five are, Mark. That would be that would be awesome. If you're up for it, that'd be brilliant. And lastly, but by no means least, is uh, Woods from MT Woods Runner. He lives in uh, Montana in the U.S. Um, and uh, Every time I watch one of his videos, I'm just transported into the mountains of Montana. The landscape there is just stunning, and he picks it up really well in his videos. Um, it's often him and his dog uh, off for, off for treks up into the up into the hills, and um, yeah, they're just they're just good fun, good fun videos with a beautiful beautiful backdrop. Um, so Woods, it would be great to see what your top five are. So there we go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.